Hey and welcome back to Gaming for Tokens. I'm Marshall and in this episode we're going to be talking a little bit about static stuff. So like static functions, static classes, static variables. Even though they, it really all boils down to what a static class is. Um, this is a pretty straightforward topic. Uh, I'm hoping it won't be too long. I'm going to give a bunch of examples and stuff though, so who knows. Um, static stuff is really, really useful for a lot of things. You can use it as like a temporary save system, like a checkpoint system or whatever. Um, you can use it to temporarily save settings. You can use it for all sorts of stuff. It's not actually intended to be used as a save system, though. You can just utilize it as one. It's mostly used as a way to store like utility functions and things that will help you out um, with the back end. So like, some of the examples that I, I have noted um, over here off to, to stage right, uh, which I have notes. <laughs> Spoil. Uh, well, I don't know what that was called. I don't know behind the scenes. I uh, yeah, sure. So, um, in my notes, I have written down uh, nav mesh, game object, vector three, math f. Those are all uh, static classes. So, if you remember how those work, then you'll understand kind of how a static class works. Um, it might have always been a big mystery as to how those functioned, because you just kind of type in the name and then you access functions on them. Um, we're going to be able to set up things that do that same thing. Uh, yeah. So, jumping right in, I will show you, um, again, how, oh, hey, spoilers, whoa. So, you'll see that I have, I have a scene set up here, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. Um, this is scene number two. I should have scene number one. There we go. And we also have with us a, this. So I have example, and I have example two, and then I have a bunch of scripts, and I'm going to talk about these scripts um, later. <laughs> uh, those are going to be how I close out the the video. But for now, let's look at some some actual static classes that I know we have. So, like I said before, nav mesh is one of them, right? Which, by the way, my my uh, monitor develop has been doing this, and I haven't been able to figure out how to fix it. It should be indenting to here, but instead. Whenever I type anything, it indents to there, so it indents twice. I have, for the life of me, not been able to figure out how to fix it. All of the settings say only indent once, so my apologies. I think this was happening in the last video or last two videos or something. I don't know how to fix it other than to, like, uninstall Unity and reinstall it. So, yeah, that's a thing. Um, anyway, try to ignore it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so nav mesh is one of them. If I type nav mesh and I say dot, I get a bunch of these functions here. You'll see that if I hover over nav, if I hover over nav mesh, if I highlight nav mesh, hum, if I go down to, there we go. Okay, so if I look at some of the functions on this thing, uh, some of the, yeah, these are constants, so that's that's fine. But like all of these, uh, these variables and these functions and things are are all labeled as static. So what that means is that I can access the nav mesh class, which is a, a static class, from any other uh, chunk of code in the game. So sometimes you're going to need to, as you've seen in other videos, like import things like using uh, Unity Editor dot UI. Wait, dot. Wait, why not? Unity editor dot weird. That used to be a thing. That might only be a thing in the new one. Oh, dot scene management. That's a good example. So now I can access uh, scene scene manager. I don't know why. Oh yeah, see everything is all indented, all weird. Anyway, so uh, scene manager editor scene manager is a um, is a, a static class as well that lets me do various things with the various uh, or very has various functions on it that do various things and I can access all of those just by accessing the static class editor dot scene manager and then print typing a dot and now I have autocomplete on all of these um, these various static classes or static functions rather so uh, that's one game object is another one you're going to be very very familiar with you'll see that it, uh, this is a sealed class my apologies. Sealed classes function very similar to static classes in at least in Unity. Um, yeah, so if I do that, then I can do dot 
um, find, right? So that's a static class on a, uh, presumably on a static object. There might be more than one object called game object. There could be a seal, there could be a static. Um, but either way, uh, this is a sealed class, which in our purposes functions just like a static class. Uh, there's also vector3, which is also going to be a sealed class, but it also has things like distance, which is a static um, function. I should probably not rush through that. So all of the distance dot, uh, down is a static variable, and smooth damp is a static class. So yeah, uh, vector3, and then the good old mathf is a sealed struct, which has a bunch of static classes on it as well. So yeah, um, all of those are examples of how static classes and static functions work. I think I've been using those interchangeably, which is bad. Those were static functions on sealed classes and are, as an example, the sealed classes behave like static classes. Don't worry about what sealed is yet. Um, so yeah, now that you kind of know how, what we're going to be making, sort of, like we're going to be making a, cla uh, a class that you can access from anywhere, um, let's jump right into doing that. So we have our example and our example two. Example two is going to be used to access the static class example one or uh, static example. So to do that, we have a public class. So we're just going to type in uh, static static in front of public, and we have to get rid of mono behavior. Um, so the reason, oh excuse me, I have I might be developing hiccups, which is going to make this video amazing. So. Uh, just like we had before where we created our own public class that didn't extend anything because remember this colon means extend this um, Public static class uh, Cannot extend any a public static class cannot extend a mono behavior because mono behavior is not inherently static therefore um, This class cannot extend it Because it can't it can't bring anything with it that um, into the the st being static nature Hopefully that makes some sort of sense. Mono behaviors have a bunch of built-in things that are only run when they aren't static. Mono behaviors are specifically built to be able to place on an object, like we have with a lot of our scripts in the past. Static classes behave differently. You don't place those on an object, you just kind of write them and then they function. You'll see what I mean in a minute, but for, uh, for now, a public static class cannot extend a mono behavior, so we have to delete that bit of it, and you have exactly what um, we almost exactly what we did in the the uh, serializable class video that I made a while back, um, except we're not going to make the serializ serializable because we don't need to. Uh, the public static classes again aren't attached to objects, so they don't need to be serialized. You don't need to uh, grab variables on them. You'll see in a minute. I know this is kind of confusing and weird and foreign. We'll get there. The other interesting thing about static classes, because they can't extend mono behaviors, you can't use start and update. So you have to get rid of all those. So now we're left with this. We're left with this public static class static example with nothing in it. And that's where you start on a static class. You'll see that if I come back here to my Unity editor, we'll get warnings from our other scripts and previous videos, but no errors or anything like that. This is how it's supposed to be. So now um, we'll do a, I don't know, I uh, let's do this. Uh, we'll do a public static because remember you have to do static now because uh, well you don't have to but these variables are inside of static class they will inherently want to be static. I haven't encountered a time when I wanted something non-static on a static class if that's even a thing. I've never actually like I said I've never needed to do it so I've never tried. We can try it I guess public float. Um, I don't think this is going to go well. Temp float equals 0f. It's probably going to yell at me. Yeah, exactly. See, it says, um, cannot declare instance members in a static class. So the idea behind that, come on, give me back, is um, we're trying to create something that is not static that is in a static class. So like the wrapper for the, the float here is static. Therefore, it needs to also be static. So we have a public static float, and it's not, not going to yell at us anymore. And it's called temp float. So all we have right now is this one variable inside of this class. 
In our static example two, we can actually say uh, static example. You'll see that we have uh, a public static class here. And we can say dot, and we get our temp float. We didn't actually create a reference to this like we have in the past where we um, say, like, we've had to uh, do a get component and we've had to like drop in a an object into a like we had to do this nonsense before where we say uh, public game object uh, ref object and then we we do a uh, ref whoa object dot get component and then we have to do like you know the whole type of whatever we want thing type and then you know so and so and so on we don't have to do that with static classes we just reference them by name and they exist right kind of like we do with math f right so um, what this is going to do is it's going to access that float so right now we're not actually doing anything with it we could do a debug dot log yeah like that and then that would log the uh, static class so let, let's 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 first off let's close that then let's uh, go to a new scene and let's create a new game object and let's drag that thing on there so I'm gonna get rid of breakout and I'm gonna do a static example too so right now oh yeah I forgot we created a ref object on there we don't need that so right now our our float value is zero in here right and um, we have uh, nothing on the static uh, example and we don't have static well sorry we have nothing on static example 2 as a variable and all we have is on start print out our static example dot temp float um, temp float is in here and it defaults to 0 we can make it default to say 6 just so it's like a, a non zero number and then when we hit start you'll see that it'll actually print out 6 and then if we change this to say 11 it'll actually print out 11 when we hit play so we're actually in in this this function which is a mono behavior we're accessing static example temp float and we're printing it out another thing we can do if we really wanted to is this equals 55 so now it's going to print out 55 right because it's setting it and then it's going to print it out and yeah so it's 55 so this is kind of how static uh, static classes work you might be asking why the hell would you ever want to use a static class then like why not just do all of that in here we could instead of doing all of this we could just have a float in here right and then float temp equals 55 F and then we could just say we have the float that's 55 why do we need to have it in this other thing well there's a couple reasons why um, the first being this is kind of like a universal variable everywhere can access it everywhere can can read it everywhere can write it and that's really really powerful right because you can have multiple game objects in the scene all pointing at the same thing so say that you had uh, a really good application for this is game score right so you can have like a, a, a score of uh, int which we're gonna make this an int because it should be an int if it's a score right so you have a, a public static int that's a, a a game score and now you can have this thing say that uh, well first off let's get rid of that nonsense and we're going to create a public void Sorry, I'm going to move the mic a little bit. There we go. Uh, goal. And this is going to... I keep bumping my mic because I haven't found a good place to put it yet. So I apologize if you've been hearing that. But yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> so then we're going to do static example. And then we're going to say uh, game score plus plus. So now this is, uh, in theory, if we had this on multiple objects, like if we had multiple players in our game, we could then all reference the same static example, the same um, class that is incrementing our game score. And um, that would then keep track of things across multiple objects much, much easier than 
say having to find a game object and then get the component on that game object and then get the variable on that component and then increase that component it's that's a mess when you could just do it this simple right another very 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 handy and interesting thing about static classes that I haven't even touched on yet is that static classes don't empty between scene loads so you can effectively have a, a scene where you increase the game score and then you can load a new scene that is kind of like the the breakdown of how the game went and it will still have whatever the score for the game was and you can like access that and display it and all that stuff so uh, another interesting thing that you can use this for is character information like an RPG right you can have all of your character stats as a static class that way every time you go into a new scene you just reinstantiate the player and you pull the character off the static class uh, because you can do things like this um, system dot serializable and public class um, character and then in here you can have uh, well not parentheses just because dumb there we go cool so if we have a public class that's not static we can do that in the same file here but then we can do like um, public int strength equals four and then we create a bunch of these we do say dex con Wiz and cha. So we have our character here, right? And, oh, and then we, of course, we need a a public. Whoa! If I can type today, it would be amazing. Public string name new character. All right, so uh, if we had this, then we could also say public static character equals new, come on, character. So we can actually store um, classes like this. Why are you yelling at me? Oh, public static char uh, character main character there we go sorry I forgot to name it um, I've been really bad about that lately so public static character main character equals n new character right so that's gonna be one of these guys and if we wanted to ever say public static character get character then we could just do a return main character or a set character, right? And this would be a void. And this would say main character equals new character. And we're going to have a character here. Whoa. That is going to be a new character. So then um, we now have a get and a set. And so what we can do is between a scene load and a fantasy game, we set what our main character is. And then on the scene load, we get what our character is. It's kind of a way to, to piggyback, well, to, to leapfrog over scene loads, right? So like you, you plug the character into this thing, you load your scene, which dumps all your code and reinstantiates all of it. And then you pull this back down off the shelf and you can re you reinstantiate all that stuff so this is a really really easy way to do that and I have a feeling that this is what a lot of games do you can also ne not necessarily ever have to get the character you can just modify main character right because it's a public stat so in here we could actually just say um, start uh, static example dot main character dot strength plus plus and now we're increasing our main character strength every time we load a scene and then later on we can say like float uh, damage equals static static example dot main character dot strength times 10 
right? And now we have a damage variable that we can do. So this would be, um, after one seam this would be 50 damage. So we can do things like that. And it's very, very simple, and it's very, very easy. And then on scene loads, we just preserve those stats and preserve whatever else we plug into this static, uh, static class. Super, super helpful. All right. So I think that's enough about this makeshift example that I've made. Um, we can then jump right into my example here. So hopefully I won't get any errors from any of that crap. That Cool. Awesome. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to go to C static one. I'm not going to save that. And then, um, so in, in this, this, uh, these two scenes, these two scenes are identical except for this number has changed. And, um, I've done a couple things here. It's just an orthographic camera with a basic UI. You guys should be familiar with that by now. And, um, all of these are, are input fields. That's all they are. They have an input field. I added a label and I added a script to each one of these that is called settings display. The settings display is, uh, it's basically just, hey, which setting do you want to access? I'm not even using this type variable. I just have it in here in case I ever want it. And uh, what the current value of that is. And that's all this does. Oh, and a checkbox for if I want to use this setting display or not. Um, and then this is just a link to the, the, the image a field so that I can set and get things from it. So to, to go over that, um, my settings display has a settings getter in it. This gets kind of convoluted. I did a lot of um, class creation in here just because I wanted to make it simple. So the settings getter is right here. And effectively all this is is a settings block, um, which is right here. It's this little guy. And a settings block contains a name, the type, um, which is what these two variables are. This is an enumerator. I think I've talked about those. I remember talking about those in a previous video. If you don't know, um, basically it's a drop down list. Um, and then a, the value, which is stored as a string. The idea behind this drop down is that eventually I could parse this string as whatever this is, and I could reject it if it wasn't of that type. But I'm not doing that because it didn't really seem necessary for the scope of this video. Um, but I left the remnants in in case I ever wanted to do it. Uh, so just ignore the, anything to do with this drop down. <laughs> so really all I needed was a name and a value. Actually, I should be able to just... Is that going to give me an error? Yeah, I'm not even using it anywhere. Sweet. That makes things a lot simpler. So all I have is a name and a value. Perfect. Um, so you can ignore those. So that's a settings block. That's what this is. And then um, the uh, the bool for if I want to use it or not. And then I have a get and a set function. And the get function um, just gets the value off of... Uh, specifically what the get function does is it looks at what we have saved and then it sets the, the value on the display to be that value. And the set function actually goes the opposite direction. It pulls stuff off of the... Um, off of the uh, the display and then stores it in the static class. So an easy way to think about that is, well, hmm, I'm just gonna show you how it works. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna, I can enter values in here, so I can say value four, and then I can say this one is value seven, and then this one is I don't know, gaming for tokens, right? So now I have some values in here. I have some empty stuff. This button down here is going to do two things. The first thing it does is it saves all of these values to the static class. The second thing it does is it loads the next scene. So if I hit next scene, oh, static two, static two, how could you do that? I didn't add it to the build settings. Oh, that's the worst. I'm the worst. Hang on. All right. Let's try that again. <laughs> so what was this? Value, value seven, I think. I don't remember. Value five. I just hit the mic again, and I apologize for that. Gaming for tokens. All right. Now, if I hit next scene, it's going to load the static too. Hey, it did it. Cool. But you'll notice that I just changed scenes entirely, and these values are still the same. And if I come in here and I say value and I hit next scene, 
I just changed things again and that one updated. So what's happening here is um, the uh, all of these different settings have this setting display script like I was talking about and on start on awake rather they're getting the setting from the static class and they're apply and they're setting the display to that value the um, and then on on save we're actually taking that value from the display and we're setting that on the setting script God, I use really bad terminology for this setting the setting on the setting object anyway so setting setting value yeah it's awful so sorry about that. <laughs> so we're gonna uh, we take the setting object, which has a setting object on it, which is terrible. I agree, and we set the value on that to whatever the display text is, and then we say set, set on a settings getter. <laughs> says that if it's not blank, which it could be, and if it is, then I'm ignoring it. So we can't have blank setting names. That's a uh, one limitation, but I didn't whatever. It's not really a limitation. So if it's blank, then we ignore it. If it's not blank, then we say setting storage, which is the big one that I haven't talked about yet, this guy down here. Um, we're going to set that setting as the setting that, that uh, we have here because it stores a setting block. Okay. That was really rough to get through. <laughs> Effectively, what it's doing is it's saying, hey, save this. Hey, get what is saved. That's all the settings display is doing. And it's applying it to the display, which is a uh, input field. Um, yeah, and I, I have my my load scene script here, which is bogus, and then I have my save settings, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, that's kind of that's well, I'll talk about it now, I guess. So on the um, the the load button on the next button, I have the save settings and I have a load scene, and I have them in that order where I save the settings first, right here. You see that, and then I have a load scene dot load, which is the next one down. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, telling this script to to do its thing which um, gets all of the different setting display scripts in the scene and tells them all to save. That's all I'm doing. I'm just looping through all of them and saying, hey, all of you guys save. So again, that calls this function down here. And I do that just before I load the next scene. So that goes through all of the different settings and it sets them, which if you remember correctly, goes to here. And that says setting storage dot set setting, um, which I feed the setting block into. Okay. I think we're through the worst of it now, and I apologize if that didn't make sense. Um, <laughs> if you do have any questions, leave comments, and I will try to answer them as best as possible. But effectively, all I'm doing is I'm taking whatever is in that text field, and I'm feeding it to this static class here that I haven't talked about yet. So hopefully when I talk about this, it'll make sense. Um, yeah. So uh, I have a couple functions here. I have an add setting and a set setting. Um, I also have setting exists and get setting, but I'll talk about those in a second. So um, I am calling set setting most of the time. You'll see that here. The reason why is because these actually play off of each other. So this, uh, it's a static void, so it doesn't return anything. I'm feeding it a setting block, and I have an override bool here for create new. You don't, I don't have to use this, right? I can actually, um, I can just ignore this if I want to, but the, the idea w with this flag here, this bool, is that if I set this to false and I feed it a setting that doesn't exist, it won't create a new entry for it. But I want, if I'm setting a setting, oh god, that's the worst. If I set a setting that does not exist yet, I would like it to create a new entry for that setting, if at all possible. Uh, so yeah, that's what this flag does. I set it up so that it... Oh God, I'm using that word a lot. I uh, created that to give me a little bit of leverage if I wanted to use this in a strange way. That's all it is. You can ignore this if you want to. But um, So right now I'm checking to see if the setting exists. And that is just down, that's down here. I feed it a name. I loop through my saved settings. And I see if one matches. And if it does then I return uh, true, and if it doesn't, then I return false. That tells me if the setting is already there or not. Uh, if it is there, then I want to find it and then, s then update that value. If it's not there, and I have the create true flag set, which by default it is, then I want to add it, which is this other function up here. Um, I don't know that I have talked about lists on this channel yet. Lists are 
incredibly useful. They are very, very, very handy. They do a bunch of things that I talked about in previous videos that arrays do much simpler. The reason why I never talked about them uh, partially is because I, I didn't really ever start using them until just recently, but also because they're kind of the easy way out. And I wanted, this is uh, a hard truth to admit, I kind of wanted to teach you guys the harder way to do things because it was more informational and more valuable for you to learn the processes of than for you to just learn the shortcut way of doing things and never know how to do those other things. So the things that lists let you do are things like this settings.add where you can just say list.add and it will insert that value at the end of uh, wherever, right? You can also do things like this. Uh, settings.removeAt where you can, it's effectively an array. That's what a list is. I don't know if I said that. A list is effectively an array. Um, but you can call certain functions on it, like remove range, remove at, you can reverse them, you can do all sorts of fancy things with them. Um, but the uh, there is a downside to them, and that is that they are a little bit, they're more resource intensive, so they make, you don't want to use lists all the time, right? You don't, like it's, it's hard to describe why, because I've never had issues with them before, but like, I still, I use them interchangeably. I use arrays usually for public variables and I use lists for private variables. It's just the way that I write code now. Um, but yeah, lists are very, very handy to write. But they're, think of them effectively as arrays. In most cases, they work the same as arrays. They just have fancy functions like add and remove and things like that on them. Now you know, and you can go forward. Oh, if you do want to use arrays, you have to put uh, using system.collections.generic at the front of it, otherwise it won't work. You can't access them. And the way you write them is similar to this. So you say public static, uh, the t uh, the object that you want to make a, um, a, so a list, public static list, and then the object that you want a list of. So kind of like how you do public string. Uh, this is a list of that thing. And then you name it and then you say, you know, just like there, you know, just like you'd expect. Um, and that actually creates a new list. That was a big tangent. I'm sorry. Lists. I forgot that I never talked about them before when I wrote this. Um, but lists are really, really handy. I suggest you look up the documentation on them. Look up some examples online. Um, but yeah. Uh, so back to my set setting. So if the setting exists, we're going to loop through and we're going to find it. So we're going to say, hey, cool. You found the thing with the matching name. And then we're going to say settings I. You are the new setting. And then the slot is I. The reason why I have this in here uh, is because I wanted to do a debug output of which one I updated, and I didn't want to do it uh, when I updated it. Yeah, because I wanted to um, know if I wasn't updating something. I, this was a debug thing. I, I didn't know if I was ever finding the, the setting, and this would only ever happen if I found the setting. This now actually happens if I don't find it, which is bad. So this actually does need to be in there. Because if I feed that a value that doesn't exist... Oh, but wait, if it doesn't exist, it'll... Okay, never mind. We're fine. That's just a really stupid way of doing it, but whatever. That's fine. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just wanted to debug out stuff. So yeah, uh, this loops through, finds the thing, sets it. Pretty straightforward. Uh, if it doesn't, then it goes to add setting. Add setting says, hey, if you don't exist, um, add. If not, set. So effectively, these play off of each other. If I use set setting and it, uh, if it doesn't exist, then it will create a new entry if that flag is set, which goes to add setting. And then if it goes to here and it doesn't exist, then it goes over to set. Or if it does exist then it goes over to set setting. So like if the entry already exists, then it will go to set it. If it doesn't, then it'll go to creating a new entry for it. It's kind of like a, an, an I don't want to say dynamic. It's a, a branching system, I guess. Like it's intelligent enough to know when something does and doesn't exist and it sorts it accordingly. So if you give it the wrong function, it'll go, I, I, fi I know what you meant to do. Sorry. <laughs> that makes, I hope that makes some sort of sense. And these settings, like I said, are just a list of, of these things. They're just a name and a value, right? Um, you can get away with a lot with a name and a value. 
So the uh, the other thing that I have is get setting, which just you feed it a name and it will um, return a value. It might return a null value if you feed it something that doesn't exist, but um, yeah, it'll return a value of some sort. And that's really everything. That's that's everything there is to know about this script. And hopefully that made some sort of sense. But the idea is is basically that like this is a static class. And you can access this class from anywhere. So if I wanted to, um, on my load scene, say uh, settings storage dot uh, get setting setting one, that would actually return the value for setting one, whatever that would be. So if I wanted to say debug dot log error whoa I'm going to get a a red error when I load the scene that is going to be whatever the value I put for number one in here so I can say my name right I can I can hit next scene and um, I get a red error. Oh, I get settings block because I didn't actually dot value. Ah, cancel, save, hit the wrong button. All right, so now I'm gonna get a red error that says my name uh, when I type my name into value one. So I'm gonna do that, and I'm gonna hit next scene, and I get an, a red error that says my name. So um, it's really, really easy to access those settings now, and I can use these settings I can use a system similar to this for things like uh, a settings menu where I set the resolution if things are full screen, if um, whatever I want to set the, like if there's a texture resolution, like a max, uh, like a, a texture scale, right? You see that in games sometimes, like a, a low, medium, high, ultra. You can use that, that's just a numerator that you save on the on the settings block. And then you say like, Texture res. Whoa, my caps lock is on. Texture res, and then you have an enumerator over here that's like, or you use an int, right? And then you just say one, and one is low, right? Or zero is low, and then one is medium, two is high, and three is ultra. And then you can just, uh, you now know whenever you instantiate a model in, it looks at this for which texture to use, right? Uh, it's very very handy to, to do things like that um, yeah hopefully that was helpful if you have any like questions about any of this ask them in the comments and I will be more than happy to answer um, static classes are very very handy they're really hard to explain because they don't function like any other uh, any other type of class or, or function or anything like that they you notice that I didn't put that object anywhere like the uh, the the settings storage isn't actually on any object in here. Uh, I don't know if I emphasize that enough. It's it's just over here on the side. That really really confused me at first when I started looking into how to write static classes. Is I didn't understand that you just write the code and then you access it from anywhere. Uh, another thing that I usually write is I have a utilities script um, that I that I uh, add a bunch of things to. Like I have a random number generator that I that I write that is. Um, that piggybacks off of Unity's where it generates the random number but then it stores it so that I can access it later. Um, I also have a, uh, oh, what else? I don't know. I, I, it's, hard to, it's hard to remember, but you, have a, you can make a bunch of um, static, very, or static functions that do things for you. Like you can have an alphabetical sort static function that you just access, hey, uh, utilities dot alphabetical sort, and then you feed it a list of objects that all have, like, that are a string, a list of strings, and it'll return them in an alphabetical order. It's really, really easy to do things like that uh, using static functions. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful. I feel like I was a little bit sporadic in this one. I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm very tired. I got a new job, so I'm working a lot. And, uh, yeah. But like I said, hopefully hopefully it was helpful. And if you have any questions, please hit me up on Twitter. Um, ask them in the comments. 
and I will get back to you hopefully within the same day. I'm usually pretty good about checking my comments and uh, my Twitter especially. My Twitter is the easy way to get a hold of me, fast way to get a hold of me. Comments it could take me up to a day or two to find out that you even said anything. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.